we are excited to show off Sapphire Photoshop. This is a brand new host for Sapphire. Like, if you're like me, um, I've been using Sapphire for a long time. I've all, anytime I did a still, I was always wanted to put a lens flare in or put something in. So I would jump into After Effects, have to render stuff out. I'm happy to say that is no more. Uh, we now support Photoshop as a host application. And I see Ben's got his, his UI up. Everyone who has Sapphire 2022 will get Sapphire for Photoshop. Um, whether it's a, an Adobe license or an OFX license or an Avid license, you're, you're going to be getting this. And the reason for that is actually kind of important um, because, you know, this, this is the first time that we've had the entire suite of Sapphire available in Photoshop. We've, we've had bits of it. We've had some of the, the effects available in Optics. But the idea behind Sapphire for, for Photoshop is a, is a little bit different. Um, obviously, you can use it if you're a um, uh, you know if you're a photographer and just working on stills. But one of the, the big advantages for uh, for Sapphire here in Photoshop is that you can use it as a jumping off point to other applications. Um, so this is going to be great for creating you know style frames or or just you know coming in and noodling around on a on a still in Photoshop. Um, actually, let's 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 start off with this. Let's stop the nattering and actually just come in and uh, show you what we're going to do. So I've got a still here, um, which I've taken from a from a, a video, and I'm just going to create up a little style frame. Now, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And the reason for that is that I want everything that I do to be non-destructive. And by protecting it in a smart object, everything I'm going to do now is going to be completely non-destructive. So I'm going to come to my filter. You'll see that Sapphire just pops in uh, in our filters. And when I apply it here, we get into the Sapphire Builder. Now, if you've used um, Sapphire before, hopefully the Builder is going to be very familiar to you. It's a sort of, um, it's a way of chaining different uh, effects together in a nodal based system. And it's really at the core of uh, of sapphire for photoshop so what i could do is i can i can add a uh, any of the effects that we have over on the left hand side so this is pretty much all of the sapphire effects come in here uh, i'll just choose gamma because it's at the top uh, and this will then drop that into my workspace down in the uh, the bottom there over on the right hand side i've got all my uh, parameters so i can come in here i can make this a little bit darker, come in, scale the lights up, do whatever I need to do in the parameters. And I'll see this over in my viewer. Now, as, uh, as Brian said, you know, one of the, uh, the, the things that people look for a lot, uh, and have been missing a lot in Photoshop is Sapphire's lens flares. And this is where we can come in. I can just type in lens flare. And here we go, or even just type in lens. I've got my lens flare there. I'll just double click on that. And that will then drop that in uh, in line in my uh, in my workspace down the bottom. Now, the cool thing about this is that I have access to all of the regular presets. So I can take a look at all of the, the sort of factory bundle presets or just look at the new stuff. Um, this is also also new. Uh, everyone loves the fact that we always give a few new uh, big presets with uh, with our lens flares just to show off some of the new capabilities. And obviously 2022 is, is no exception to that. We've got some cool new stuff, but no, no, no. I'm not going to get distracted by lens flares. It's very easy for me to get distracted by lens flares. I'm just going to come into featured, which is where we put some of our our favorites so some stuff that have maybe been tweaked up a little bit or just stuff that we haven't seen for a little while i'll, I'll choose one of those so i'll drag this over out of sight so what i'm going to try to do is, is sort of build up the light that's already there so we can see the lights coming from this direction because that's where the, the light is on her face and i'll come in and i'll just make this a little bit a little bit bigger a little bit brighter Nothing too, 
you know, nothing too uh, clever here. But the nice thing about having the, uh, the effect here in our nodal based system is that I can always come in and I can tweak stuff that's earlier on in the process or earlier on in the, uh, uh, in the workflow and kind of just get the look that I'm uh, going for there. So just bring that in around about there, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add one more effect because I want to show you one more thing uh, before we move on. Um, let's come down to my distortions, warps, warps, warp, stylize, transitions. I'm actually just going to type in warp. That's going to help out a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to go warp. Uh, let's do warp chroma. And this is one of my favorite effects. You wouldn't know it from from looking at this but that's why i always go in and take a look at the presets whenever i add in a new um add in a new effect like there'll be very few occasions where i'm going to be starting out from scratch on any of these effects so if i just want to add a bit of uh subtle chromatic aberration i'm going to use one of john's presets there and what i can do is maybe just let's just crank that out quite a lot so we can see exactly what that's doing. But obviously that's that's kind of coming in and that's messing up all of the image for me. So I want to do something slightly different. You'll notice that some of these uh, nodes have secondary inputs to them. And some of the nodes have uh, tertiary inputs or you know three or more inputs. Impressive. And what we can do is we can... I think, I mean, I, I like my words. I like my words. Um, so what we can do here is we can pipe in uh, different nodes into these. Uh, so for example, with Warp Chroma, I've got a mat that I can pipe in. So if I do shape, come into here, and I'm, I'm a man true to my word. I'm never going to start from scratch. I'm always going to start with a preset. Oval for mask. Look at that one. Beautiful. Let's preview that selected node and just come in and let's tweak that up a little bit so it's just going into the center here all right now i can pipe in that shape into my map for the, the warp chroma let's turn that off so you can see what's going on and now it's only affecting the bit in the middle that's kind of the opposite of what i want but that's fine i'm going to come over i'm going to invert my mat and now it's going to be taking over and, and masking that out exactly how I want it to go. And I can just twist that up a little bit and do whatever I need to do. Uh, it's looking a little bit steppy. So maybe let's take the step number up just to, there we go. Just to make that a bit more sort of, I know not subtle, but smooth. Smooth is the word I'm looking for. And let's hit okay on that. And that will then go along, have a little think, come out and it will give me the uh, the effect directly in Photoshop. So if it's not exactly what I want, if I want to do anything else with it, all I have to do is just double click on the Sapphire filter at the bottom because it's applied as a smart filter. Remember, we're working non-destructively. Let's zoom in here. Oh, this is this is something. This is something I, I, I promised that I would remember to uh, to say and almost forgot. Something brand new with Builder for Sapphire 2022 one-to-one -one pixel uh what's it called pixel uh preview is that what it's called what's it called brian pixel preview pixel preview <laughs> no 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 so it's 100 percent. so you no, can, can you can see the what's full image um oh man i uh pixel preview yeah, sounds no, good to on. me um what i was going to say Here is previ previous versions of builder right if you if you had a, a big image a 4k image you know it sized it down and gave you a low res preview um and so now yep. in 2022 you can look at the full pixels so you can see the full image you can look at one-to-one -one, um, and you can shrink it down to fit your um your little window as well but that's really cool i mean we knew we knew we had to add this upgrade working in photoshop because we're going to be working with big huge images and everybody's going to want to see see that one-to-one -one pixel um ratio so yes and that is in all of builder too not just in photoshop so in yeah, after effects resolve that's, that's it yep everywhere yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. because that's that's the that's the important thing is that it was brought in 
because we knew we were going to be working in you know big images in Photoshop. But obviously, you know everyone's going to have the uh, the benefit of that, no matter what version of uh, of builder you're working on. So uh, let's let's crack on here. So I can make changes. I can do all that sort of fun little stuff. I want to show you another another thing because I know that time is ticking. So very very quickly, I'm just going to start up a brand new. Uh, image. I'm going to convert this to a smart object as well, even though it's just a, a white background. Remember, we're going to work non-destructively. I'm applying my filter in there. Maybe I should have applied it down the bottom. It's going to just show my other little node thing there. Let's just get rid of all of that. We saw that we could use preview. Oh, sorry, we uh, we could use presets in individual effects, but we've also got builder presets now. Uh, a lot of these are created by the one and only Mr. John Dickinson. And these are very, very pretty. Um, and these these are sort of strings of ready-made presets that that use multiple nodes to, to build up uh, certain, you know, certain effects. I'm, I'm going to use Cloudy Night Sky here. I'm just going to double click on that just to load it in. It will have a little think. And this is what we've got down here. So we've got the whole of the um, the node structure working down there. Now, this is really great. If I want to start to use this as a jumping off point, or if I'm looking for something, you know, kind of cool and spacey, um, there's tons of sort of stock images out there you can buy that's cool and spacey. But once you bought something like a stock image, it's it stays the same. You can't change it up. With having something live in uh, in, in the builder, like this, I can come in, I can change up my cloud color. Let's change that something over here, maybe. Let's find something uh, that's pretty. There we go. Um, I can change how these clouds look, looking, shift it all around. I mean, it's it's all, it stays, it stays live and that's what makes it interesting. Um, let's try and find yeah, maybe something around about there. And what else can we do? Oh yeah, I've got a gradient at the bottom. Let's change that color. Uh, let's make it just completely, completely different. I kind of, I kind of like that. And we can, we can add to this as well. Uh, so I've come back into, into warp. I love the distortion category. You might have noticed it's one that I go back to time and time again. Uh, let's come into warp fish eye. Uh, and I'm just going to add a little bit of something here just to, to kind of make a little, you know, make the lens a little bit different. Now, the cool thing about this, what I think is most important, is that I can then take this preset and use it somewhere else, or take these, this setup and use it somewhere else. Um, and I can choose, if I'm going to take this to Avid or Premiere or um, After Effects, I can, I can choose which of these type of uh, parameters are going to be immediately available to me in the host. So I'm going to just turn on things like add a tick to amount, add a tick to Z distance, add a tick to rotate. Uh, let's save as, I'm going to save this as ZZ Ben Cloudy. There we go. And just save that out. Uh, I'm going to hit OK on this. So I can save this as a still. Hit save. Let's call the stars final. Maybe we'll call the stars final O2 because uh, that's not my normal naming convention, obviously. Um, and, and while that's saving out, what I can do is I'll go into um, After Effects. The only reason it's taking any time to save out is because my hard drives have gone asleep. So I've spent too much time yakking. And so let's make a new comp here. And I think that's saved out. Stars Final O2, there we go. So in After Effects, I can bring this in as a bit of footage, but it's just going to be a still bit of footage. There's, no, there's nothing really I can do with it. It's there. It's cool, but it's, it's, it's static. If I bring this in, if I come to um, Builder, go to S Effect, and then load up a preset here, my Builder Effect, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom because I have ZZ Ben Cloudy, look at that, and it will come in. And not only will it show me the same image that I had saved in Photoshop, 
that's the same areas turn it on and off it's the same um it also has those things that i can i can control and change over here so if i keyframe up the amount i'll keyframe up something to do with the stars as well i'll come five seconds in let's uh change this up a little bit just make that a little bit bigger do i want to zoom in zoom out let's zoom in a little bit a little bit a lot we go and we'll do a little bit of um rotation maybe do change the stars up just a tiny 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 amount and we'll just sort of do a quick ram preview you can see i can take that image that i've created that style frame that i created in photoshop and i can then build on it inside of after effects and i don't have to go in and do anything like finding suitable effects or you know similar effects that i've built in i i can just come in and use it as if it was built in after effects so this is obviously going to be really useful if you're working as, as part of a team or you know working on your own but just trying to sort of do deliverables to different areas